I'm Colin Wright from Agilent Technologies. The purpose of this short video is to give some insight about a curious characteristic of the spectrum of an NRC data stream. The example here is a spectrum of 1 gigabit per second NRC data. And you can see there are deep nulls in the spectrum at 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, and so on. It's a bit counterintuitive. There's no energy at the fundamental bit rate. So this demo compares NRZ data to a square wave, like the clock in double data rate system, and how this odd shape arises. This is the ADS Ptolemy diagram we used to generate that spectrum. I have two sources actually, a waveform here, which is a square wave, and the bit stream, which is random data, probability of a zero is a half. I put them through this logical uh, multiplier, which is an exclusive OR gate. I get out a bit stream at one gigabit per second. I'm going to upsample that using this repeat block, repeat them a hundred times to get a 100 giga sample per second data stream. I'm going to change the rise time and fall time using this sliding window averaging rolling average filter. It's like a low pass filter. You change the window size from two to 10 samples, 12 samples or so on. And then I'm going to assign a sample time to my numeric data, in this case 10 picosecond, and put that into the time sink. I'm using a data flow simulation engine. So by changing this variable here, probability of zero between 0.5 and 1, I could change smoothly from a square wave which is what I get when the probability of zero is one, to a random data when the probability of zero is a half. I can vary smoothly between a square wave and random data. That's the idea of this little three block model at the beginning of the diagram. So let's look at the results in the time domain when I simulate this with a value of one for the probability of a zero. I should see just a square wave in the plot. I go to the time domain plot here. See my square wave here. And zoom in. See the rise time here. In this case, I have a four sample rise and fall time. Now if I were to run the tuning feature of Ptolemy, while looking at this plot, I can show you how the um, waveform changes as I vary the probability of a zero from one to a half. See, that XOR gate is flipping some of the bits at random and making a random waveform. I can also tune the rolling average so that the rise and fall time gets longer and longer. The slope of these lines is varying from two samples to about ten samples. So I can control those two aspects of the waveform. Now let's look what happens in the frequency domain when I do this tuning. I'm going to go back first of all to the square wave and put the probability of a zero back to one. And go for the fastest rise time. I'm going to raise this marker, move this marker out of the way here. Now this line here has a slope of minus 20 dBs per decade. What we're seeing here is a square wave at 500 megahertz. We have tones at the fundamental, which is 500 megahertz. Nothing at the second order, which is 1 gigahertz, because all the even orders are emitted from a square wave. A little bit less energy at the third order, a little bit less at the fifth order, seventh, ninth, eleventh, and so on. So the power spectral density of a square wave is a sequence of ones and zeros with a fundamental frequency of uh, one over twice the bit rate. In this case, it's 500 megahertz with a bit rate of a bit period of one nanosecond. We have a sequence of tones where the power is spiked for 
certain values k, the odd orders, fundamental, third harmonic, fifth and seventh harmonic, no power otherwise. And the envelope of the harmonics decays as 1 over the frequency, which is the 20 dBs per decade that we saw. Now compare this with the power spectral density of an NRZ waveform. In contrast to a square wave, we get this sync function where we have nulls at the even multiples of the 500 megahertz clock frequency. We also have an envelope that decays as 1 over f at the same 20 dB per decade. So what's happening really is the tones we saw, the odd orders, are broadening out and leaving gaps, where we had gaps at the even orders, we have these nulls. So let's have a look at that in our diagram and see what happens as we tune between a pure square wave to a pure NRZ wave. I'm going to alter the probability of a zero and we'll see what's happening. You see, the bulk of the power of the NRZ data corresponds to the odd-ordered harmonics of the square wave. And the nulls correspond to the missing orders, the even orders of the square wave. I take this to its limit, where I have a probability of a zero of a half. I still have the same slope, which is minus 20 dB per decade, which is caused by that 1 over f term in the sync function. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the rise and fall time by increasing the length of my rolling average filter. Right now I'm averaging over two samples. I'm going to increase the number of samples I'm averaging on. Take a note of the high frequency part of the spectrum to see what happens. The low frequency part of the spectrum isn't affected very much. But the high frequency part is severely attenuated. So by rounding off those edges, I take out all the high frequency components. You can see actually it's about a 7 dB drop at uh, 6.5 gigahertz. With 10 samples, I've actually got about an 80 second rise time. And so 0.5 divided by the rise time, the 10% to 90% rise time, is about 6.5 gigahertz. And I'd expect, using the rule of thumb in, uh, you find in most textbooks, you see about a 7 dB drop below the minus 20 dB per decade line. You see a 7 dB drop caused by the finite rise time. The formula is usually 0.5 divided by the 10% to 90% rise time gives you the frequency where you see a 7 dB drop. In our case, it's 6.5 gigahertz. So at the end of the demo, the, uh, the reason for the nulls is these are the even harmonics which you should have in a square wave. And the bulk of the spectrum of NRZ data is at the fundamental of the clock, the 1010 pattern and the odd harmonics of the clock. And of course, these um, harmonics are broadened out 